Good evening and welcome to the Grand Prairie City Council meeting for August 8th, 2016. I'd ask everyone in attendance to rise and join us in singing O Canada. to the National Film Board of Canada for the video and to our very own Grand Prairie Boys Choir for the uh, recorded audio. Uh, we'll move into the adoption of the previous council meeting minutes. Can I have a motion for the adoption of the July 11th minutes, please? Councillor O'Toole. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes. Thanks very much. Council July 11th. Thanks very much, Councillor O'Toole. Um, any discussion or debate on the minutes? Um, just uh, there was one minor note that I'd pass on uh, with respect to the uh, city manager retirement in the motion it says that the mayor work with the current HR manager I think it was just the HR manager I don't think we're anticipating that there's gonna be a different HR manager <laughs> I'd hate for the HR manager to wonder why they're talking about the current HR manager rather than the HR manager other than that um, we have a motion to adopt the minutes uh, we'll call for the vote thank you that motion carries. Uh, we'll move on to the adoption of the agenda. Councillor Rice. I move adoption of the agenda as presented. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice. Any discussion or debate on the agenda? Again, seeing none, I will call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you, that motion carries. Uh, and this brings us to the delegation portion of our agenda. It's an opportunity that we have at every regular city council meeting for anyone in the community to come forward and address council on any community matter. Uh, we have one delegation that let us know in advance uh, that they wish to address council tonight, and that's Mr. Baron Manns uh, from Aquaterra Utilities. Mr. Manns, welcome. Thank you. Good evening. Just wanted to update uh, council this evening on, on what we've been up to and what have we done for you lately. Uh, so I have a bit of a presentation that I, I hope you can see. Uh, so Mr. Rance, can you just make sure that there's a microphone a little bit closer to you there? Is that is that a bit better? Yeah. Okay, thanks. Uh, so I want to touch on uh, accommodating city growth and some of the projects that are currently underway and the planning that we're doing. Uh, talk about some of the value in the services that, that we're providing to city residents and businesses, uh, a bit about growing the company, uh, talk about s some of the changes to the USA and, and utility bylaw updates that are currently underway, and then touch on the process for us to update our business plan for the next couple of years and the opportunities for input that, um, that shareholders have. Uh, with respect to accommodating growth, we've got a number of projects underway, in, including the downtown enhancement, uh, airport transmission line, uh, ultraviolet uh, disinfection at the water treatment plant, some plans for projects down at the river. Uh, on the sewer side, uh, we're completing a 116th Street uh, trunk sewer that uh, you'll, you'll have noticed the uh, construction of for the last uh, year, and a, year and a bit. 
uh, the uh, historic uh, sewer trestles uh, across Bear Creek are, are uh, nearing their end, and, and then touch on some of the uh, master plan and the uh, growth projects that we have. Uh, with respect to some of the water projects, uh, the, uh, we're, we're currently participating with the city as part of the downtown enhancement and the replacement of the water and sewer mains downtown that includes uh, upsizing to accommodate some of the intensified uh, development that'll occur both in the downtown and, and uh, north of there in the Swan Avon, uh, sorry, in the uh, Avondale uh, neighborhoods. And um, we've committed four and a half million dollars uh, as, as our contribution towards that downtown enhancement project. Uh, with respect to the uh, West End uh, Airport transmission line, uh, that's complete now, and so that's a, a water transmission line that runs from about where the college is out to the airport reservoir. Uh, that'll improve the fire flows uh, in the West End, accommodate industrial commercial growth there, uh, and improve uh, water supply overall. Uh, that's a $3 million project, uh, again, that's uh, completed now. Uh, another water project that we have underway is... Um, uh, to put in UV reactors, ultraviolet reactors, to improve disinfection of the water system. Uh, so that's uh, improved disinfection without the use of chemicals. Uh, it's a $2 million project, and that'll be completed uh, this year as well. Uh, and, and some of the um, key projects that we have on the books and, and have had for quite a while uh, relate to the river. Uh, and, and it's interesting, the recent um, events uh, that have impacted North Battleford and, and Prince Albert in Saskatchewan, uh, we too want to ensure that we have um, a good supply of raw water storage down at the rivers and, and that's one of the uh, key elements of this project. Uh, also to protect uh, the bank from further erosion, it's been slowly working its way uh, back from where it is now on, on our side of the river. And also to put in place new intakes uh, that meet current uh, standards and, and also increase the capacity for us to be able to take water from the river. And that's about a $20 million project uh, that, that we believe um, should be eligible for uh, Alberta Community Resilience Program funding that we'll be uh, working with the city and, and other shareholders in, in applying for. And also uh, the new uh, federal infrastructure program has uh, water projects as a high priority and, and expect to work with you in terms of uh, looking to access funding uh, for that project as well. On, on the wastewater side of things, uh, that 116th trunk sewer isn't as obvious now when you drive along 116th Street because it's kind of gone uh, off to the west there and it's working its way through the, the, the raw land that's there and, and should be completed in September. And we'll co connect O'Brien uh, in the south to the center west neighborhood and really open up that entire west and north end of the city to continued uh, development uh, over the long term. Uh, we appreciate the city's investment of $4 million in that project. Uh, in total, be, as a regional project, we received $6 million in, in funding uh, that'll include uh, a connection from the Claremont Lagoon into that trunk main ultimately. Uh, and uh, there'll also be a further extension uh, to the north of the gravity portion of that trunk sewer of about 101.5 kilometers uh, at about a $3 million uh, project cost before we get into the forest main component of that. Uh, we look at the, uh, the uh, sewer trestles that have been uh, a fixture in, in uh, Muskocipi Park for a long time. Uh, we've uh, put in place now a, a lift station that diverts flows from College Park uh, out of that Swanaven neighborhood. And so it'll, uh, again, accommodate some of that uh, upstream intensified development over time. And uh, over, over next year, over the winter, we'll look to deconstruct those trestles. So... Uh, Young boys will have to find another way to test their courage. Um, in, in terms of the wastewater treatment plant upgrade, uh, that was completed in, in December. Uh, it was almost a $61 million project, and it'll provide uh, about 25 years of projected regional growth uh, uh, in, in the region. It'll provide improved river water quality. Uh, and and um, again, it's got some projects tied to it. Uh, like the bioreactor landfill gas to energy project that uh, has also come online now, that will we'll take that methane gas from the landfill and uh, use it to heat and power those uh, treatment plants. Uh, and so again, that project is complete and, and we're now operating that and, and hope to be able to sell some emissions credits uh, after a year of operation there next year. 
from a business development uh, perspective, the uh, existing bulk water station that's been in place next to the service center for, for ages uh, will be replaced now with a brand new facility that's uh, in, in the West End on 97th Avenue uh, between the fire hall and, and the ATCO building, closer to the ATCO building, that we expect to open up uh, within the next month. And, and that'll be a $2 million project that'll really improve um, access and loading for bulk water as well as remove all of the traffic headaches that, that have existed with its current location over time and accommodate the extension of 112th Street over the railway tracks um, when the city is ready to do that. Uh, we've been working on some updates to our master plans that look long term at, at what's required for uh, the water and sewer systems to accommodate long term growth. Uh, it looks at what some of the future land uses are that, that you intend to see and, and what would t take for infrastructure to accommodate that uh, and looks at timing and projects that informs uh, development processes, uh, our capital plans, uh, as well as, as um, contributions by new development through the infrastructure charge. And so once those are complete, we'll, we'll update some of those other plans and processes based on that new information. And, and so this particular slide uh, identifies the, the water system long term and, and gives an indication of the area that's involved uh, and, and looks at some of the future reservoirs and, and various uh, key facilities on the water system that will need to be uh, accommodated there. And on the same way on the, on the wastewater side, uh, long term planning for the future trunk lines uh, and, and what those areas will serve and, and give an estimation of both the sizing and, and costs uh, to accommodate that, that future growth. Uh, with respect to uh, providing value for service that, that we have, uh, we've set a goal of 25 by 20 that, that relates to the $25 million of cash flow by, by the year 2020, with, with the result being that, that our utility rates will be below the median uh, compared to other Alberta cities. Uh, we we uh, intend to double the dividends paid to shareholders uh, and, again, to, to prudently manage risks in terms of the public trust we have uh, in providing uh, the utility services that we do. When we look at some of the utility charges in comparison to, to other cities in Alberta, we find that we're currently at the median of those when we combine those all together. Uh, and when we break out those various charges, um, it, it um, highlights some different things. If we look at just the water and wastewater charges, we find that uh, Grand Prairie rates are actually slightly below the median uh, of Alberta cities. Uh, when we look at solid waste charges, however, we find that, that uh, we're, we're kind of second only to Edmonton in terms of what we charge on a monthly basis. Uh, and so for us to uh, achieve that goal of being below the median, really we want to be able to focus on those solid waste charges and look at what we can do to potentially reduce those. Uh, in terms of growing Aquaterra, we, we're looking at expanding our services to other communities, uh, providing services to industry, exploring whether it makes sense for us to participate in, in large-scale industrial water treatment, um, to assist some of the, the reuse of, of water, say, used for fracking down south, and, and to look at growth through acquisition of, of uh, related companies. Um, we've also explored, uh, you know, the potential for new shareholders and have recently had discussions with the town of Fairview around that. Uh, they've they've uh, chosen not to pursue that further at this time. Uh, and we've been working with Wembley over, over time to, to extend water out there and, and uh, with an announcement this spring of... Uh, them achieving uh, $1.8 million in Water for Life funding to continue on with the detailed design. That's a project that's starting to, again, move forward somewhat. With respect to other services to industry, we acquired Watchhorn Rentals uh, in January of 2014, and they provide water and wastewater services to industrial work camps in, in Alberta and British Columbia. Uh, they, they've um, been Im impacted by, like the rest of the oil patch, in, in terms of... Uh, uh, it's been pretty tough lately. Uh, they seem to be coming out of that partly as a result of, of the Fort McMurray fires and the, and the need for equipment and resources to, to support the rebuilding of that community, as well as some of the work that's occurring in, in northeastern British Columbia uh, and the Site C Dam. Uh, so we're they're looking at uh, you know finding work wherever that is, even if it's not uh, uh, nearby. Uh, and again, we're continuing to to look at uh, large scale industrial water treatment in alliance with Waterstone Energy Services and, and look at ways of reusing and recycling some of the water that's used for fracking in, in terms of the flowback and, and uh, um, produced water that's, that's there to reduce the reliance on the use of fresh water. 
Uh, we've identified some changes to the unanimous shareholders agreement to, to deal with new voting shareholders and um, the technical issue of, of cash investments uh, not generating a prior stock dividend. Uh, unanimous consent that's currently required for discretionary dividends and, and some of um, other issues. And, and so we've begun a discussion around that and we'll provide some more information and detail to kind of further uh, some updates to that unanimous shareholder agreement. Uh, we've also been updating our utility bylaws. Uh, they've been kind of pieced together over decades really and it's time to, to do a reset. Uh, and we've been working uh, with uh, all of the three communities that have utility bylaws that relate to us and in the fall hope to be able to bring those forward. Uh, in regards to our business plan and, and our future plans over the next couple of years, uh, we have an annual meeting that's set for September 20th and so it'll provide an update to all our shareholders on how we've been doing and what we plan to do. Uh, we'll present a draft business plan for the next two years to our board in September uh, and then have an opportunity for shareholder input uh, to those plans in October and seeking final approval before the end of the year that way. Uh, so that's really a quick overview of, of what we've been up to of late and certainly welcome any questions that you might have at this time. Thanks very much, Mr. Mans. I see Councillor Rice. Did you, when do you anticipate the new bulk water uh, system will be opened? Uh, we expect really by the end of the month, if, if not uh, fully to the public, it'll, it'll be operational and, and we'll start to have that in place. So we're certainly within the next month. To the, but to the public, I'm trying. Yes. Okay, and it's the same where they can charge it or? That's right, where they can set up an account and charge it directly uh, or, I mean, we've had coin-operated ones, but that's becoming less less used. Okay, so where would people set up an account prior to? So, I mean, any existing accounts they have will, of course, oh. continue to work okay. and, and they can give us a call and we can set up an account very quickly for them to be able to, to access. Well, thank you. Thanks, Councillor Rice. Uh, Councillor Radburn. Thank you, Mayor Kevin. Um, Baron, uh, thanks for coming this evening. A useful update. Appreciate that. My question is relative to the solid wastewater charges. Uh, you talked about working towards getting that to medium or, or lower. Uh, what can be done? What kind of things are you considering in that regard? Uh, well, I mean, there's a, there's a couple of things. One one is to look at the levels of service and make sure that that what we're providing for service is is the right level uh, in terms of what what residents <coughs> want to see. Uh, solid waste uh, revenues overall are very dependent on on what comes into the landfill, uh, and mm -hmm. and with respect to that, uh, how can we incent more of the waste certainly that's generated in the city to be disposed of at at our landfill, uh, and. Um, and to look at some of the other communities, if, if we go back to that chart where it compares our rates, um, overall, uh, the, the community that's next to us in terms of the next lowest rates uh, is Red Deer, uh, and they have one of the lowest uh, solid waste charges uh, in the province. <coughs> so we're looking at what they're doing uh, in terms of uh, uh, being able to keep those rates uh, so low in comparison. So we hope to be able to to look at some options and, and come back to you with some of those options in terms of what we could do uh, to try and drive some of those uh, charges and solid waste lower. Do you think, uh, Mayor Gibbon, if, uh, do you think something might be in their next business plan relative to strategies in that regard? Yeah, certainly that's been one of the areas that we need to, we've identified that we need to focus on to be able to increase value to our customers that way. Thank you. Um, Councillor, sorry, I see a couple of council members in, in the queue. I just had a question on the solid waste, if, if I could. So, Baron, um, if memory serves, uh, Aquatera has the solid waste franchise, basically the right to um, to have all the solid waste generated in the city go to the Aquatera landfill, is that what percentage or, or what portions of the solid waste currently go to landfill and, and, are, and where, if it's not 100%, where does the rest of it go? Yeah, well, we're served by two landfills in the region, ours and, and the Claremont landfill. Um, about almost 80% of total waste is, is really commercial industrial, and, and the haulers then choose what's, um, what's their favourite landfill or, or closest uh, in terms of taking the waste to. Um, a, a number of years ago, uh, the split used to be about 60% our landfill, 40% the Claremont landfill. That shifted over time, uh, such that in 2014 there was actually more waste going to Claremont than our landfill, uh, and so that that uh, certainly drives revenues uh, in that respect. 
Uh, and so um, we would like to see more waste generated in the city come to our landfill and, and work with the city and other stakeholders in, in how that could happen. So does this, would the city have a role to play in that in, in, since the franchise is granted by the city? Uh, certainly, but both in terms of, of, of that franchise as, as well as uh, mechanisms that the city has in, in approving bylaws and rates and incentives uh, to, to see more of that waste actually come, come to our landfill. Okay, thank you. Councillor Rice? Aaron, I understood that you were working with ARMA in terms of developing a tire marshalling area, which I believe ARMA would then pay you for. Is that correct? Yeah, we've, we've had initial discussions with ARMA, and we'd be very pleased to continue to work with them to see a marshalling area at our landfill. Thanks. Councillor O'Toole. Thank you very much, Mayor Given. Um, just, just basically regards to the recycling, uh, have you noticed an increase of recycling at the landfill? And uh, what's your opinion? Like, is, is there a market for some of this stuff? Is the market still holding? Yeah, the, the market for recyclables, uh, in particularly paper and cardboard, really uh, is goes up and down and uh, somewhat driven by the economy. Uh, and and um, we've seen uh, increased acceptance and, and uh, involvement by both residents and businesses in recycling. I think there's really strong support in the community for that. And so both at, at, at curbside, the eco center, and, and at the landfill, we've seen increased uh, amounts of recycling um, uh, year to year. Thank you. Mr. Ans, uh, a different topic. Um, you mentioned the uh, landfill gas capture and uh, the potential of receiving, um, such as getting revenue from emissions credits uh, starting after, after a year of operation. So the provincial government's new um, climate regime um, and the carbon, uh, carbon tax, carbon levy, that's being introduced in 2016, what impact will that have on the uh, economic viability of the landfill gas capture project. Mm -hmm. So for us, as as a as a project that that reduces the greenhouse gas impact, uh, it's favorable for us. And so the the increase in the values of those credits uh, re will result in in more revenues than than would otherwise exist. And and again, accelerate the the payback period for that project and make it more viable over the long term. Has the government uh, made any estimation of what the credits uh, what the what the credits will increase to? Yeah, there's been some policy announcements that will increase from the current $15 a ton to $20 a ton and then and then to $30 a ton after, I think, by the end of next year. So, so that increase is certainly uh, positive for us as, as a project that reduces greenhouse gas emissions. So, so could double the revenue? Yeah, potentially. We, we always will pay a discount on, on what um, uh, final emitters would just pay simply directly to the province for, but but certainly it would uh, significantly improve our revenue stream over over the previous regime. Okay, thank you. Um, any other questions for the delegation? I don't see anybody else in the queue. Mr. Mance, thanks very much for the presentation and update on Aquaterra's uh, activity over the last while. Certainly has been busy, and I know all of us have been keeping track of 116th Street as we drive down and see the massive piles of dirt uh, going along. Um, I certainly appreciate Aquaterra's uh, support with that project and with the downtown project in particular as, as we get on stream with that one. Thanks so much. Thanks for your time this evening. Uh, so, as I noted, this uh, delegation portion of our agenda uh, does occur every two weeks. Uh, it's an opportunity for anybody that wishes to come forward. You don't have to let us know, uh, as Mr. Manns did. Uh, you don't have to be booked ahead of time. So if there's anybody else that wanted to address council on any matter uh, that's on our agenda or any community-related matter, now would be the time to do it. Uh, is there anybody else that wanted to come forward tonight uh, to address council? And if there's not, then we'll close the delegation portion of the agenda uh, and we will move on. Uh, we have no items of unfinished business tonight. Uh, and that would take us to reports. Item 8.1 and Councillor Rice, I recognize you. I move uh, declare a conflict of interest. Okay, Councillor Rice uh, will declare a conflict of interest as the downtown association is her employer. Uh, she'll leave the council chambers and uh, we'll move on to business arising council. There's a recommendation there for an appointment. Councillor Radburn. Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. I'd move council appoint Ms. Lisa Lozon as a public member to the downtown 
Business BRZ Association Board of Directors for a term ending December 31st, 2017. I think this was, as the report indicated, uh, in response to a, a resignation from the present board, and I think that's the t when that term ended. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Radburn. Any discussion or debate on the motion? Seeing nobody ringing in, I will call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries. We can call Councillor Rice back. And we'll move on to uh, committee business. Our first item is a uh, community growth committee meeting from July 12th. I know we have a number of council members uh, that are away, um, but uh, so if one of our council members that was in attendance at community growth committee, uh, Councillor Rice, thank you. You just have to get your microphone there, Councillor Rice. There you go. Okay. <laughs> I move. Uh, Council received the minutes of the Community Growth Committee held Tuesday, July 12th, as presented. Thanks very much, Council Rice. Any discussion or debate on the minutes? Seeing none, then I will call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Uh, Council Rice. I move that Council forgive the Grand Prairie Storms contract. Sorry, and uh, sorry. Thanks, Council Rice. I would just recognize Council Radburn. Council Radburn, just turn on your own microphone there. Thank you, Mayor I'm declaring a conflict of interest on this item and will re excuse myself for this item. Okay. Thanks very much. Councillor Radburn will declare conflict of interest with item 9.11. It does feel like it, we need a traffic light in here. I <laughs> move Rice. that Council forgive the Grand Prairie Storms contract costs in the amount of $89,810.25, inclusive of GST including the amount of their contract with Revolution Place for the period November 1st, 2015 to August 31st, 2016, and ICE rental fees at Coca-Cola Centre for the 2015-2016 hockey season. Thanks very much, Council Rice. Uh, open for discussion and debate. Um, I'll uh, just speak to this. I supported it committee. I would encourage council members to support this. Um, I believe this is uh, absolutely in line with council's uh, priority focus area of uh, supporting our core, strengthening our core. Um, the Grand Prairie Storm are the major tenants of Rev Revolution Place, as we all know. And uh, when I consider the uh, investment that council has made into downtown through our downtown incentive program, uh, this is uh, roughly equal to two uh, facade improvement grants uh, and it was reported at the committee meeting that uh, the uh, storm even uh, with uh, their attendance having been lower the last couple of years still draw uh, literally tens of thousands of people into our downtown core over the course of a hockey season so I think for the cost of two uh, facade improvements uh, I think uh, drawing tens of thousands of people into our downtown core um, is uh, an equal or arguably more important uh, incentive or investment in our downtown. So I certainly will be supporting the motion and would encourage council members to support it as well. Any other discussion or debate? I don't see anybody else in the queue, so I will call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries. And we can call Councillor Radburn back in. We'll move on. Uh, Councillor Rice, was there anything else you want yeah, to add? I'd be happy to answer any questions of any of uh, the other items um, at that meeting. I don't see anybody, any burning questions. Uh, so then we'll move on. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice, for stepping in there. Uh, 9.2, the Community Living Committee, and I don't think we have to look for a, a stand in there. I think Councillor Tarrant, uh, he'll be able to handle that one for us. Uh, Mayor Given, uh, I would move that we approve th that council approve the community living committee meeting minutes held on Tuesday, July twelfth. Thanks very much, Councillor Redburn. Any discussion or debate on that set of minutes? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. The motion carries. Councillor Taren, anything you want to highlight for us? Uh, just one uh, item that. Uh, <coughs> could uh, potentially have uh, some interest for the community it was in regards to the uh, old Ang Anglican Church. There was a group that uh, presented a, a proposal to uh, to take over the building and restore it and uh, make it uh, a place uh, for, for their use. And uh, so we'll 
think we're councils are waiting to see how those uh, discussions are going, and uh, we'll go uh, go from there. Thanks very much, Councillor Tarrant. Uh, we'll move to 9.3, the Council Committee of the Whole meeting from Thursday, July 14th. I think any council member that wanted to could take that. Councillor Radburn. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would move the council receive the minutes of the Council Committee meeting of the Whole meeting held Thursday, July 14th, 2016, as presented. Sounds this right. was uh, the meeting where we provided uh, some direction with respect to Bear Creek Outdoor Pool. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Radburn. Any discussion <laughs> or debate on that set of minutes? And seeing nobody ringing in, I will call for the vote. Thank you. Motion carries. Uh, and 9.4, Community Safety Committee meeting. Who's going to handle community safety for us this week? Councillor Rice? I move that Council receive the minutes of the Community Safety Committee meeting held Tuesday, July 19th, 2016. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice, for stepping in again. Uh, any discussion or debate on that set of minutes? Seeing none, I will call for the vote. Thank you. Motion carries. Councillor Rice. I move that Council amend the long-term capital plan to reflect an increase of $225,000 for a total amount of $425,000 to purchase a Type 3 wild land fire engine or a similar model to be funded from the Financial Stabilization Reserve. And this, uh, this is the type of equipment that's needed so we can provide the same level of service to the annexed area as we do to our other residents. Thanks, Councillor Rice. Any discussion or debate? Uh, Councillor O'Toole. Uh, thank you very much, Mayor Gibbon. I just wanted to comment as well that the fire department did, uh, uh, when the original annexation went through, they supplied themselves with a fire truck that would, uh, would work and uh, accommodate the uh, requirements but with this new model that they're looking at uh, it will accommodate uh, much better and service a lot uh, um, more areas that uh, are required okay. thanks council tool and i would just also note one of the questions i had at the committee was had we always planned on having two trucks and uh, administration reported that certainly they had uh, the intention though was to start start small uh, actually determine what the need was based on what they saw and in, in providing service in the area and uh, the response back was that they need to have something that's a little bit of a larger unit. Uh, I appreciate administration taking that step of first delivering the service, uh, testing what it was, uh, what equipment would be appropriate for that before, rather than starting with the big truck, <laughs> which I think some people might have a perception that uh, that's what um, emergency services departments would do. Um, they took a, a prudent approach starting with a smaller service and uh, identifying whether the larger one was needed, so I appreciate that. Any other discussion or debate? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. That motion carries. Councillor Rice, you, you stepped in on one where you've got a whole bunch of motions to make. And you just have to restart your microphone there. Um, I move council give first reading to bylaw C1328. Do I speak to it now or after second? Uh, maybe we'll, we'll, take, uh, we'll take first reading and we'll call for the vote on first reading. Uh, please vote. Thank you. Okay, I move Council give second reading to bylaw C1328. Okay, thanks very much, Council Rice. Uh, do you care to speak to it? it? This is a bylaw that outlines changes including increased permit fees, increased minimum inspection requirements, and implications for non-compliance. So Schedule B has been amended um, so uh, for residential rates as well. Thanks, Councillor Rice. Um, one thing in that, uh, there was discussion and debate at the committee meeting, uh, a motion around amending the residential rates, but I don't believe that that was adopted uh, or recommended by the committee. Uh, I certainly uh, continue to support oh, yes. that. Oh, sorry, yeah. Uh, I, I continue to support that and, and um, uh, would, uh, I, I could either leave the chair or I could ask another council member uh, to make the motion, um, but my interest is the same as at the committee level. Uh, which would be to um, see the uh, rates uh, reflected in Schedule B for building permit fees in residential properties uh, be $3.75 in 2016, uh, $4.75 in 
excuse me. 50 and then five. $4.50, yes, thank you. $4.50 and then $5 um, in the subsequent years. Um, is there is there anybody that would, and if there isn't, that's fine. Uh, is there anybody that would be willing to make that motion for me so we can have a discussion debate on it? Councillor uh, Councillor Tarrant, it's in the queue. There, uh, just a, a question on that. So could you identify which fees? Yeah, so the, uh, and maybe uh, it may be useful for us to have, I see our uh, admin team from um, Billing and Safety Codes uh, here, so in Development Services, maybe be useful to have them at the uh, administration desk. Um, but in bylaw C 1328, Schedule B is the uh, residential uh, building permit fees. Uh, these are the fees that apply uh, per thousand dollars cost of construction to single family dwellings, duplex dwellings, uh, semi detached, triplex, fourplex, garage suite, and reconstruction. Reconstruction of fire damaged buildings. Um, did I get that right? <laughs> okay, uh, Councilor Tarrant, does that highlight it for you in the bylaw? Uh, yeah, that's that makes sense. Could you maybe explain why the rationale for wanting the, the rates increased? Well, you know, let's if uh, if Councilor O'Toole would make the motion for me, and then that way we can actually be discussing and debate it. If there's nobody that was going to make a yeah, Councilor O'Toole. So I'd make the motion that uh, you, yourself, Mayor Given, has uh, mentioned outlining before. As, as made at the committee level? Yes. Okay. Okay. Thanks very much for, for doing that. Um, and so to speak to it, um, administration reported at the committee meeting uh, that uh, they had initially proposed a higher uh, set of rates um, than was being presented to the committee, um, uh, those of $350, $4, and $450. Um, and administration reported that in consultation with industry uh, before coming to the committee, that industry said that the rates needed to be lower. Um, I believe that that's uh, council's job. I certainly appreciate administration consulting industry. Uh, I think that City of Grand Prairie uh, and council have done a lot to encourage our staff to work with industry. Uh, but in the end, the determining which rates are appropriate uh, should come, that's a council decision. Um, and I appreciate administration took it uh, industry's wish and amended the report and, and the rates that were proposed to what industry would like to see. Um, I believe uh, from the information presented at the committee level um, that the uh, rates that are proposed in the original motion uh, are will keep the city of Grand Prairie at the very low end of the spectrum. Um, the smaller increase um, is not as high as administration would have originally proposed um, and would keep the city of Grand Prairie still under the median of the rates across the province in comparator cities. So uh, my amend, the amendment, sorry, excuse me, the, the amendment that Councillor O'Toole was kind enough to make um, would still keep the city of Grand Prairie uh, on the low end of competitors, um, but would be more of a, a midpoint position between uh, what industry wanted to see and what administration would have recommended without industry's feedback. Uh, open for any other discussion or debate? Councillor Tarrant, I see you still in the queue. Uh, sure, I'll speak to it. <laughs> um, I'll be speaking against the motion. Um, I believe that, uh, you know, although we're, uh, you know, have a have lower rates right now, I think that's uh, to our advantage to keep them low. And I think that there's a, you know, we're in quite the battle right now with, with the county uh, to be, uh, to be honest, and this is just one small area that we want to that we can be a little bit competitive in, and uh, I'd rather uh, keep that uh, very small competitive advantage um, rather than uh, losing any ground on it. Thanks, Councillor Tarrant. Um, and perhaps I, um, I don't have the information at hand about uh, how we fare with competitors, particularly with the County of Grand Prairie. Does administration have that information at hand? Could you? Could you could ask administration to speak to how we compare with the County of Grand Prairie? And you'll just have to turn the microphone so it actually points towards you. This would be the, the initial proposed increase that we originally had taken to count, um, sorry, to industry. And here you can see that we would be sitting in the middle of the pack um, with the county still uh, quite a bit higher than us. Um, then the second option that we were proposing, we will be along amongst the lower and um, still quite a quite a long ways from the from the county. 
and so what I believe Mayor Given is proposing is still a, is still going to be a happy medium in between those two proposals and um, still a long ways off from what the county is currently charging. So, and I apologize, Council. Obviously, I don't have a, a chart to be able to show exactly where this would land. But as you see, the uh, if we could go to administration's original proposal, um, the uh, amendment proposed tonight uh, still doesn't reach the by 2018. The amendment proposed tonight still won't reach the level that administration was recommending for 2017. Uh, so over the entire three-year period uh, and phase in that, admin, that min, excuse me, that industry requested, um, even the small amended amount uh, doesn't get to where administration would have originally recommended, uh, and will still keep us in the bottom bottom half of the fees across the province. Councillor Rice, just want to to confirm the rates are going up. the The amendment is. The amendment is just to make the rates higher than what was proposed, but the rates are increasing for residential. I'll ask administration to confirm that. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Any other discussion or debate? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote on the amendment. Thank you. On the amendment. Thank you. And that motion does not carry. Thank you, though, Council, for uh, giving the opportunity to have that uh, discussion here. Uh, we'll move on to the main motion as originally proposed. Any discussion on the main motion? Seeing none, then uh, I will wait for the screen to change because I think as soon as I hit the vote button, it starts to populate so we all see the votes as they go in um, when it comes back to me. Okay, please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Okay. Thanks very much. Councillor Rice, I that move, was second reading. That was second. I move we have third reading of bylaw C 1328. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice. Any discussion or debate on third reading? Sorry, on the merits of having third reading? Uh, seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Thank you. Motion carries. Council Rice, we can have third reading. I move third reading of bylaw C 1328, the building bylaw as amended. Thanks very much, Council Rice. Any discussion or debate on third and final reading? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you, and that motion carries. Uh, Councillor Rice, you're still not done. I move Council Award Tender T56552162016, 2016 Traffic Signal Repair and Replacement Program to RGM Contracting, Inc. in the amount of $969,917.26, exclusive as GST, as the lowest bid meeting city specifications. Thanks very much, Council Rice. Any discussion or debate on the motion? Seeing no one in the queue, I will call for the vote. That motion carries. Council Rice. I move Council Award Tender T58552162016 Trail Rehabilitation and New Installations Program to Rico Construction 2010 Limited in the amount of $684,199.95, exclusive of GST, as the lowest bid meeting city specifications. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice. Any discussion or debate on the motion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Please vote. You, that motion carries. Councillor Rice, was there possibly anything else on that agenda? Nothing, I think, that we've covered the spectrum. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Rice. Uh, we'll move on to 9.5, the Corporate Services Committee meeting, and uh, Councillor Radburn. Thank you, Mayor Given. I would move Councillor receive the minutes of the Corporate Services Committee meeting held Tuesday, July 19th, 2016, as presented. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Radburn. Any discussion or debate on that set of minutes? Any errors or omissions we need to correct? Seeing nobody ringing in, then I will call for the vote. 
Thank you. Motion carries. Councillor Edmer. Thank you, Mayor Gowen. I would move Council to direct the Mayor to write a letter to the Minister of Labour in support of maintaining Canada Post's national retail network by considering opportunities to leverage that network through service expansion, expansion such as banking services and the possibilities it could provide. Thanks very much, Councillor Edmer. Any discussion or debate on the motion? Uh, council members will remember that uh, we received a presentation uh, from a delegation about this uh, a couple of council meetings ago. Councillor Tarrant. <clears throat> I will be uh, speaking against this motion and I encourage fellow council members to, uh, to speak against it as well. I think it's far outside of uh, the realm of uh, city council and outside of our mandate to uh, advocate for uh, uh, a federal program in this nature. And so I would uh, encourage us to, uh, to not uh, get involved. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Tarrant. Uh, any other discussion or debate? Um, I'll just say that I uh, am supportive of the motion. Um, there uh, was a discussion at the uh, committee level about uh, about uh, um, the fact that uh, the federal government has requested uh, opinion from municipalities, uh, from uh, individuals, and, and from organizations across the country. And so th this is actually a public input round. Um, and the motion as worded uh, is really specific uh, to the maintaining the retail network, uh, the retail footprint that Canada Post has. Um, and uh, there are, are some other issues that were raised by the committee uh, that aren't specifically addressed in here. Uh, council members might remember the postal banking uh, service was a specific request or a specific item. Uh, this motion is a bit more broad than that it says, speaks uh, in support of Canada Post's retail network um, and that they should, uh, that we encourage the federal government to leverage that network to the service of Canadians. Um, so um, it doesn't necessarily, I think, endorse uh, postal banking services, even though they are, it is in the motion, uh, by all means. Um, but uh, I am supportive of the motion and uh, would look for any other discussion or debate. Seeing none, then I will call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Um, I don't, was there anything else from that set of minutes, Councillor Adburn? Uh, no motions, Mayor Gibbon, but I a couple of other items that I could uh, share with, uh, with those watching. Uh, first of all, we did have a, uh, a presentation uh, on municipal owned fiber conduit, and um, it uh, basically talked about the future and looking at uh, making uh, that a part of our regular planning processes. And uh, we received that report for information. Uh, no action uh, other than uh, this concept will be included in this in the next business cycle and uh, the budget uh, account, well, accompanying that business cycle. Secondly, uh, we had received a report on the potential of directing uh, city fixed income investments uh, to express a preference for Alberta bonds. Uh, some information that we received there uh, did uh, quantify uh, that we would uh, would be receiving uh, less uh, uh, proceeds uh, on those investments, so a uh, committee chose just to receive the uh, report for information and make no changes to our present uh, policy or procedures. Thirdly, we uh, received a report on WCB rebate funds. Um, there and uh, there was a, a motion that was defeated, referring that discussion to the fall budget because it could. It could mean that we would need uh, additional revenues uh, to move that money out for an express purpose of, of directing it to uh, to some way. Uh, so that was defeated. But uh, in uh, discussions with, uh, with Ms. Williams, that item will be coming back to our committee in the 16th because we did follow that defeated motion up with another motion. And so that's what we will contemplate next meeting. And uh, finally. Uh, uh, I brought forward, I guess, uh, uh, asset, asset management planning, and uh, we did receive some verbal information from Director Anderson, but the uh, uh, committee did make uh, a motion to uh, admin, uh, to direct admin to bring back a draft uh, asset management policy to a future meeting. Uh, and that covers it. Thank you, Mary Gibbon. Thanks very much, Councillor Edburn. Um, I think that handles all of our committee business. Uh, we had no items of correspondence today. Uh, we did have the delegation presentation from Mr. Manns from Aquaterra, Councillor Rice. We received Mr. Manns' presentation for information. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice. Um, I will call for the vote. Yeah, 
And that motion carries. Uh, Mr. Mans did uh, raise the issue of solid waste rates. I wonder if uh, could would a council member refer that? I, I think I guess I could add it by email as well as well. But uh, we do sometimes vote on referrals. Could we vote to refer uh, the city's role in uh, solid waste rates to the appropriate standing committee? I'd just like to examine what the city's role in that might be and how we might support Aqua Terror in uh, lowering those rates. So I'm just looking for a motion of referral to the appropriate standing committee. Councillor Radburn. I will do that. Very good. Thanks very much, Councillor Radburn. Uh, any discussion or debate on the motion of referral? Councillor Rice, are you in the queue for that one? Yeah. yeah. I think it's premature. I, certainly he mentioned that will be coming forward to us with, uh, you know, several different options and, and uh, opportunities. So I, I believe it's premature now. Sure. F fair enough, Councillor Rice. I appreciate that. I, I would like to see, though, because I, since the city has a bylaw on this, um, and there's essentially a situation where we're a competitor to another shareholder. I wonder, I'm just curious about the, the actual city implications on that. So I'd, I'd like to kind of understand that a little bit more. Uh, the County of Grand Prairie runs a Claremont landfill. And so any waste that's diverted from there uh, goes into the county's revenue where landfill that goes to the uh, Octera landfill actually goes to the benefit of the county, the city and Sexsmith and all shareholders. So I'd, I'm just curious about uh, that relationship vis-a-vis -vis the other shareholders. And I'm not sure. Aquaterran will be in a position to actually make a strong recommendation to all shareholders when uh, this is a situation that's slightly different where the service isn't uh, shared equally, I guess, amongst the amongst the members in the utility. So that that's my intent. Uh, no problem if somebody thinks if uh, you think it's premature, but that was my reasoning. Um, any other discussion or debate? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote uh, on the motion of referral. Motion carries. Um, we had no other delegation business. We have no notices of motion uh, this time. Uh, I don't believe council members said that they had any reports from external agencies, boards, or commissions, but if there's something I missed, mm -hmm. um, then if not, maybe we'll start uh, Councillor Rice. Uh, start with you with Council Roundtable. Okay. I attended the uh, STARS unveiling of their logo. Um, it was interesting to note the celebration was held during the Oilman's Golf Tournament at the Grand Prairie Golf Club, the Grand Prairie Petroleum Association has donated a million dollars to STARS over a five-year period, and this was their finally reached the goal of a million dollars. Um, so it was a very, and then their logo, the Petroleum Association logo, got placed on the helicopter. Uh, I think one of the most interesting uh, parts of the evening was the president of the Grand Prairie Petroleum Association, uh, Rob Patron, is very passionate about what the oil industry, how it enhances this community and the numerous initiatives that uh, they support. So it was uh, it was a, an excellent evening, and Alderman Radburn uh, did an excellent job of bringing greetings from the city. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice. Um, next, uh, I appreciate the Councillor Logan has been overlooked on our Council meeting today, being the only one uh, maintaining the right side of the Council table here. So, Councillor Logan, if you'd care to go next for us. Thank you. The uh, uh, only two things that I'll mention, one is the uh, uh, fantastic chance to uh, host my uh, uh, daughter and her and the grandsons, and that was wonderful in this time. And the other was to uh, help out in a small way with the, some of the damage done by the uh, downpour we had in Grand Prairie. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Logan. Councillor Tarrant. Yeah, just one uh, event I got to attend in the last couple of weeks here. The Grand Prairie uh, hosted the um, Bantam AA uh, baseball, minor baseball tournament. Here and uh, we had a uh, Grand Prairie team represented and uh, they did very well, ended up getting uh, silver in the tournament. And uh, congratulations to uh, all the organizers of the event. I know there was teams from across the province here and it was uh, great to see uh, uh, the excitement there and, and to see uh, such a high level of play. Thanks very much, Councillor Tarrant, for doing that over the council break. Councillor Radburn. Thank you, Mary Given. Just a couple things, uh, just to, uh, I guess, support uh, Councillor Rice's comments on the STARS uh, GP Petroleum Association, great partnership. 
and a significant uh, change over, uh, I think it was five years. And basically the, the thrust of that or uh, main project is their hangar bust out or hangar party event. And that's really supported by, by everyone. Uh, also, I'd just like to uh, kudos to, uh, I think, our, our team at the City Hall. I thought, and, uh, and congratulations to the Downtown Association Board uh, for our Downtown Rehabilitation Project groundbreaking. I thought it was well, very well done and uh, great turnout. Uh, from staff, from I guess the successful bidder from the downtown association. So we're looking forward to uh, the groundbreaking here and the project starting. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Reverend. Uh, Councillor uh, O'Toole. Sorry, you Count there you go, Councillor O'Toole. I forgot my name. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I just got a couple of. Uh, topics I want to talk about. Uh, Municipal Government Day was held here uh, last month and uh, it was an overwhelming success and I want to thank the city crews, the volunteers to make this an overwhelming success for sure. The weather held out, the, uh, the Good Neighbor Awards were given out and the artistic uh, uh, art projects were fantastic and well received by the, the people that won. Also uh, on a sports uh, note, I attended the uh, volleyball team Alberta selection for the uh, Indigenous Games at the college a couple Fridays ago. Um, we often get criticized we don't have much to do in Grand Prairie, but we had uh, 17 teams, 200 athletes, plus the accompanying coaches and parents, and uh, talk about sports tourism right there. And it literally covered the entire part of the province, from the far north to the far south, the east and the west. And uh, I can tell you the competitors were uh, quite excited to be in the Grand Prairie Regional College Gymnasium. Uh, it was something that uh, they marveled. So uh, with that, I also attended the uh, uh, East Coast Garden Party Ball Tournament. There was uh, over 40 teams there. It was sold out long before the uh, the event, and uh, once again, people from all over the region showed up. So there you go. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Councillor O'Toole. And Councillor Logan, you had something additional. Yes, I'm sorry. I uh, can't believe that I missed this, but I did want to uh, make note in this chamber of the uh, passing of uh, Fred Rennie, a longtime publisher of the Daily Herald Tribune, a uh, tremendous community supporter, and uh, came out... Uh, being able to uh, continue the success of having a local newspaper, which some other communities haven't. So uh, very sad and uh, condolences to uh, his wife. Absolutely. Thanks very much, Councillor Logan, for making that recognition. Um, uh, with that, as I look in my calendar, it was uh, the 11th, I think, was our last council meeting. That's some time ago. Um, so I have to think back to the things that did happen over the course of that couple of weeks. Um, and then the two weeks while council was on break without any officially scheduled meetings. But I want to thank the council members who did attend events and represent the city. Uh, I also had an opportunity to uh, make a call um, to uh, Minister Ryan Mason. Uh, he was doing consultation on uh, the province's uh, transit programs. Uh, they're looking at developing a next round of funding. Um, and so they're doing uh, some input. And so I had an opportunity to do that from my kitchen table uh, while the kids were playing in the backyard over our council break. Um, and I also want to congratulate uh, the staff and organizers uh, that put on the Heritage Day event uh, down at Muskegee Park, uh, a great event for our community that was very, very well attended uh, and certainly enjoyed by everyone that was there. Uh, with that, I think that's everything we have to report and I'll call our meeting adjourned.